Okay, so this video is all about intersecting lines and circles. Now, again, we've come across a similar approach when we were dealing with coordinate geometry of the line, in that a question that we may have come across in the line is to find the point of intersection of two lines. So this time, now we're dealing with a circle, a similar question would be to find the point of intersection between a line and a circle. Okay, now the approach will be the same in that when we came across this in corner geometry of the line where we had to find the point of intersection of two lines, we solved those equations simultaneously using the elimination method and we were able to find our point of intersection. With this, however, although we are still going to solve the simultaneous equations, what we have here is we have a linear equation and a nonlinear equation. And that, of course, is a different approach. When you're solving simultaneous equations, when you have one equation that's linear and one nonlinear, we have to do the substitution method. Now, there's a whole other video in the algebra section on this, just on simultaneous equations when one is linear and one is nonlinear. And that goes through in great detail all the steps you need to take in order to solve these equations simultaneously. I'm gonna go through it here, but again, that is a more thorough video if you're finding this process tricky. So, with the substitution method, your first step is to take the simpler of the two equations, in other words, the linear, and get x equals or y equals, whichever is easier. Now, because we have a three y here, it would be trickier to get the y on its own because you'd have to divide everything by three. We don't want to bring fractions into it. So it's gonna be a lot easier for me to get x on its own equals. So to get x on its own, I'm gonna to have to take away the 3y and add the five. So that would give me a minus 3y and a plus five then on the right hand side. So then once we have x equals, and that's our first step, what we do with that then is we take it and we sub it in to the other equation, the nonlinear equation. So this is now going to be subbed in instead of the x in this equation. So given that x is equal to minus 3y plus 5, I will sub that minus 3y plus 5 in there for the x in that other equation. So that then gives me minus 3y plus 5 all to be squared plus y squared is equal to five. Now you've got to be careful at this point because we've quite a bit of multiplying out to do here. And remember, when you've got brackets squared, it means that it's minus three y plus five by minus three y plus five. So we've double brackets, okay? A lot of pupils get a little bit confused at this point. Um, and when you've got double brackets, remember there's quite a bit of multiplying out. You have to multiply the first term by everything in the second bracket, and then the second term by everything in the second bracket. So doing that, I get minus 3y by minus 3y, which is a plus 9y squared. A minus 3y by 5 is a minus 15y. A 5 times a minus 3y is a minus 15y. And a plus 5 times a plus 5 is a plus 25. So now, that multiplied out works out to be this. Okay, so now I can go about tidying it up. And when I go about tidying it up, remember with your algebra, you can only add together things that are the same. So I can add my 9y squared with my plus y squared. And of course, I will get 10y squared. I can then uh, add my minus 15y with minus 15y, remember, always include the sign to the left. There's no other y term, so that's gonna be minus 30y. Then I have a 25 there on the left equals a five on the right. So tidying up the numbers, I'm gonna take away five from both sides so I get all the numbers on one side. So nothing's left on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I've got 10y squared minus 30y, and I have a plus 20 equals zero. Now you have a quadratic, and of course you've always got two options with solving a quadratic. You can factorize to solve or use the minus b formula. 
I'm going to factorize to solve um, because what I can do is I can simplify the quadratic for myself. Looking at this quadratic, I can divide the whole equation by 10. And that will leave me with y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals 0. And this is a much easier quadratic for me to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and factorize it. As I said, you can use the minus b formula. Um, but factorizing this, I need the factors of 2 that will add together to make a minus 3. And of course, the factors of 2 would be 2 times 1. And how they would add to make a minus 3y would be a minus 1y minus 2y will make the middle term minus 3y. So then I've got two things that multiply to equal 0. So that means y minus 1 is equal to 0 or y minus 2 is equal to 0. Either this bracket is equal to the 0 or this bracket is equal to the 0. Okay. Again, there is another video just on solving quadratics using both the factorizing method and the minus b formula. So go look that up again if you're finding this process a little tricky. So solving for the y then, if I add 1 to both sides, I end up with y is equal to 1 and add 2 to both sides there, and I add, end up with y is equal to 2. Now, I'm not finished. All I have are the two values for y. And it does make sense that we're getting two values for y, because most likely, if you have a, a line intersecting a circle, you are going to get two points of intersection. Okay, so we've two y values. Now what we need to do is find the corresponding x values. So, Remember, you have your equation here that x is equal to minus 3y plus 5. And just like with simultaneous equations, in even in the elimination method, you would take your y values and you would go back then and sub it back into one of the originals to get the corresponding x values. So it wouldn't make sense to sub the values back into the harder equation. It would make much more sense to sub it back into the easier equation. And I have this accurately rearranged here. So I'm going to take my two values, so y is equal to 1, and I'm going to sub them back in to my x equals minus 3y plus 5, which I'm getting from up here. And so if y is 1, x is equal to minus 3 times 1 plus 5, and of course that works out to be 2. So when y is 1, x is 2. So the coordinate point is 2, 1. 2 for the x and 1 for the y. And now I'm going to sub in when y is equal to 2. Into my equation. And instead of y, as I said, I'm subbing in 2. And of course this works out to be minus 6 plus 5, which is minus 1. So when x is minus 1, the y is 2. So there's the two points where that line intersects that circle. Okay, so take a look at this example here. Show that the line 3x plus y plus 10 equals 0 is a tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 10 and find the point of contact. Now, if they're asking me to find the point of contact, that's another way of asking for the point of intersection. So I'm going to do my usual process to find the point of intersection when I have a linear and a non-linear. I am, of course, going to do simultaneous equations with my substitution method. If, of course, they're asking uh, to show that it's a tangent, you see, if a line is a tangent, all it means is a tangent, by definition, is a line that touches a circle at only one place. So when we go to find the point of intersection, we will only find one point, okay? And thus the fact that it is touching in one place or intersecting at one point will tell us immediately that we have a tangent. That is the definition of a tangent. A tangent is a line that only touches a circle uh, once. Okay, it doesn't intersect and go right through the circle, it will just meet the circle and touch the circle with only one point of contact. So unlike what we've had before where we found two points in our answer, now we should only be finding one point. Okay, well let's do our process anyway. As I said, we know straight away the minute we're doing a point of intersection or finding a point of intersection, we need to solve the two equations simultaneously. So our method, of course, is to take the easier of the two equations, in other words, the linear equation, and get x equals or y equals. 
So again, it's going to be. So in this question, it is going to be easier to get the y on its own equals, okay? Because if we try to get the x on its own, we're going to have to get rid of that 3. And that would mean dividing everything by 3, which will bring nasty little fractions into it, which I want to avoid. So yes, it's going to be much easier to get y equals. So in order to get y on its own, I'll have to take away the 3x and take away the 10, which will leave me with minus 3x and minus 10. Okay, so there we go. There is our expression for y, and I'm going to use that now and sub it into the other uh, more complicated equation. But of course, remember, this time you're subbing in for the y. Okay, so doing that then, I have x squared, but instead of y, I'm subbing in minus 3x minus 10, all to be squared is equal to 10. And remember, of course, I've got double brackets here when I'm squaring, so that's going to be minus 3x minus 10 by minus 3x minus 10. So remember, when you're multiplying out double brackets, it's the first term multiplied by everything in the second bracket and the second term multiplied by everything in the second bracket. So what am I left with? x squared. Then minus 3x by minus 3x is a plus 9x squared. A minus by a minus is plus. 3 times 3 is 9 x by x, of course, is x squared. And then minus 3x times minus 10 is a plus 30x. Minus by minus is plus. 3 times 10 is 30. And of course, you have the x. And then minus 10 by minus 3x again is going to be plus 30x. And minus 10 by minus 10 is going to be a plus 100. Minus by minus is plus. 10 times 10 is, of course, 100 equals to 10. So there we go. That there gets multiplied out to this. And now we go about tidying it up. So what can we add together? Uh, so we have x squared terms this time and we can add them together. I have an x squared plus a 9x squared, which of course simplifies to 10x squared. And then I have x terms I can add together. I have 30x and 30x. Remember, always be mindful of what the sign is. So plus 30x plus 30x is a plus 60x. And then the number work, I have 100 on the left and I have 10 on the right. So to get the numbers all together, I'll take away the 10 from the right. Uh, and of course, if I do that, because it's an equation, if I take away 10 on the right, I've got to take away 10 on the left. So I'm left with 10x squared plus 60x plus 90 equals 0. And again, we've got our quadratic. And you have, of course, uh, as I've said before, two options with the quadratic. You can factorize to solve it or you can use the minus b formula. Okay, so with this one, I am going to factorize it again. So I can spot straight away. I can divide the whole quadratic by 10, which will make my life a lot easier. Dividing that by 10, I get x squared. Dividing that by 10, I get 6x. And dividing that by 10, I get 9. And remember, you can do that because you're dividing everything by 10. Every single term is divided by 10. Even the 0 divided by 10 is 0, you see. Once you're doing the same thing to everything in an equation, you're keeping everything equivalent, okay? just like a balance. So now I'm factorizing this, and of course this makes my life a lot easier to factorize this. I have x times x to get the x squared. And factors of 9 that will add to make a plus 6x would be 3 times 3. And of course it would be a plus 3 and a plus 3. So solving this then, it would be either plus 3, x plus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And of course solving each of those equations, taking away 3 from both sides, I'm getting the same answer in both. x is equal to minus 3 and x is equal to minus 3. So they're the very same. And immediately you see, uh, I know I'm only going to get one answer. So subbing in then that x is equal to minus 3, and we're going to go back now to one of the original equations. Obviously, this one's going to be much easier to sub in than this one. So I'm going to use this if x is equal to minus 3 and y is equal to minus 3x minus 10. Subbing in for the x, I end up with minus 3 times minus 3 minus 10, which works out to be 
minus 1, so my answer is minus 3 for the x and minus 1 for the y, and only one point of contact because, of course, those values end up being the very same. So there we go. There's our point of intersection, our point of contact, and I've shown, and let's just put our little statement of conclusion now. Uh, so only one point of contact, therefore the line must be a tangent to the circle, and that's how we know. And always put your little statement of conclusion in at the end to ensure you get all the marks. Okay, so take a look at this example. Find the point of intersection between the circle x squared plus y squared equals 16 and the x-axis. Well, what is the equation of the x-axis? Well, if you take a look at the axis here, okay, so your x-axis is this horizontal one always. The equation of this line is y equals 0. And the reason it is y equals 0 is because every single point along this line has a y coordinate of 0. Let's take this point here. It is, of course, 1, 0. This is the point 3, 0. This is the point minus 2, 0. This is the point 5, 0. This is the point minus 4, 0. No matter what point you pick along that x-axis, the y-coordinate is always 0. So the y equals 0 is the equation of that line. So when I want to find the point of intersection between the circle and the x-axis, I want the point of intersection between uh, these two. And of course, I already have step 1 done, given that when I'm dealing with simultaneous equations, which I always am looking for the point of intersection, my first step with linear and nonlinear is, of course, to get the x equals or the y equals. Well, I have the y equals there already, so I'm going to take that y equals 0 and I'm going to sub it in to the other equation. So, if y equals 0 and x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, I'm going to take that 0 and I'm going to sub it in for the y. So instead of x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, I have x squared plus 0 squared is equal to 16. And of course, 0 squared is 0, so I just have x squared plus nothing is 16, which implies that x squared is equal to 16. And of course, what I can do then to get x on its own, it's square root, both sides. Um, but of course, remember, we should always have two solutions here, and when you square root, you can always get a plus or a minus result, okay? So, you know, at junior cert level, we don't focus in on this too much, but at leaving cert level, you do have to remember to always consider both signs, because whenever you have a power of two, you are going to get two solutions. And plus or minus the square root of 16 is, of course, plus or minus four. And so you can have a positive 4 all to be squared and you'll still get 16 or a negative 4 all to be squared and you'd still get 16. So there's where our two solutions come from. And so our two solutions are 4 and minus 4 for the x coordinate. And of course, both y coordinates are going to be 0 because they're both on the x axis. So to conclude, whenever you are asked about a point of intersection and the axes, or if you ever see the words cuts the x-axis, then straight away what you will always sub in is y is equal to 0. And then alternatively, if it asks you about any line cutting the y-axis, any line or any circle, same thing when this comes up in coordinate geometry of the line. If they're talking about the line cutting the x-axis, you'll sub in y equals 0. If they're talking about it coming up in the circle, if the circle cuts the x-axis, you'll sub in y equals 0. If it's the y-axis, however, well, every single point along the y-axis, the equation of the y-axis, in other words, is x is equal to 0. So what you're going to sub in, if they say that it cuts the y-axis, you will, of course, sub in then that x is equal to 0.
all right so always watch out for this terminology um, point of intersection between uh, a line and an axis or a circle and an axis you'll sub in y equals zero or if they use the words cuts the x-axis or cuts the y-axis you will still sub in y equals zero if it's the x-axis and x equals zero if it's the y-axis because of course y equals zero is the equation of the x-axis and x equals zero is the equation of the y-axis. Okay, so final example. Pause the video if you feel confident with this one and see how you get on. Find the coordinates of the points at which the circle x plus three all to be squared plus y minus two all to be squared is equal to 10 intersects the y-axis. So in other words, where does this circle intersect the y-axis or cut the y-axis? So immediately, you should spot that, of course, it's asking about the y-axis and where the intersection is. And, of course, the equation of the y-axis is x is equal to 0. So we're going to take x is equal to 0 and we are going to sub it in for the x in the other equation. So if x is 0 and we have x plus 3 all to be squared plus y minus 2 all to be squared is equal to 10, we are going to sub in the 0, as I said, for the x. And so when I do that, I get 0 plus 3 all to be squared plus y minus 2 all to be squared is equal to 10. 0 plus 3, of course, is 3. That leaves me with 9. Now remember here we have, of course, double brackets, y minus 2 by y minus 2. So we have to multiply the first term by everything in the second bracket and the second term by everything in the second bracket. So I get 9 plus y times y is, of course, y squared. y times minus 2 is minus 2y. Minus 2 times y is minus 2y. And minus 2 by minus 2. And minus by minus, remember, is plus. 2 times 2 is, of course, 4 equals 10. And now we can start to add together the things that are the same. Now, this time... I don't have any other y squared terms, so the y squared is going to be just y squared. But I do have some y terms I can tidy up and add together. So I have minus 2y minus 2y, which of course is minus 4y. And then I can add together the number work. So let's see what I have on the left hand side anyway. I have 9 and 4 which of course is 13, equals 10. And now I have numbers on both sides, so let's take away the 10 from the right-hand side to leave me with y squared minus 4y plus 3 equals 0. And again, as I said before, we've got two options now with our quadratic. We can factorise to solve it or use the minus b formula. This time I'm going to use the minus b formula just to show you that that's the other method you can use. Remember, the minus b formula is in your log tables. And it is on page 20 and it's written like this. Okay. So here it is on page 20. All right, you can always use this to solve the quadratic. Of course, here it says x equals, <clears throat> but my quadratic is in terms of y, so for me it'll be y equals. Don't forget to identify your a, b, and your c first. Your a is always the coefficient of the y squared term, which in this case is 1. Your b is the coefficient of the y term, which in this case, don't forget the sign, is minus 4. And the c is always the number on its own, which in this case is 3. Now, if you feel I'm going a bit quick, do check out the video that it goes through solving quadratics in a lot more detail and a lot slower. And that will give you uh, a nice recap on that process to help you out uh, as it comes up here. So let's sub it into the formula. Minus b is minus minus 4 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, which of course is going to be minus 4 all to be squared. Don't forget to keep brackets around everything you sub in. Minus 4 times a and then times c. So that's 1 subbing in for the a, 3 for the c, all over 2, and a, of course, is 1. So now I'm going to do this on the calculator. Just be very careful because there's lots of brackets, lots of signs. Get the fraction button up. We're going to do a minus, uh, minus 4. And then, of course, can plus put plus and minus in on the calculator, so you'll just do the plus first. This is, of course, what gives you your two different solutions. 
So plus square root of minus four all to be squared uh, minus four times one times three. Just be very careful you're inputting it correctly. Come down underneath two times one and press equals. And I'm getting, of course, the solution three. So one of my solutions is y equals three. Or, and if I go back with the arrow button, I'm just going to go back up here to before the root and I'm going to change now to a minus. So take away the plus and put in the minus and I'm getting one. So y equals three or y equals one. So there's how you can use the minus b formula. Now remember you're not finished of course. We have our two values for y. Uh, it is of course where it cuts the y-axis so we know the values for x must be of course zero. So don't forget to state that then your final answer. So when x is zero, the y is three. And when x is zero, the other value is one for the y. So there's your two points where your circle cuts the y-axis. Zero, three, and zero, one.